Hey YouTube, we're going to take a look at the On 4K streamer box from Walmart. This box is only $20 and for that price it really punches above its weight. It comes in at $30 cheaper than Google's own Chromecast 4K, which is $50 for basically the same thing. Like the Chromecast, it's running the Google TV OS, so you've got access to Google Play Store for all your favourite streaming apps such as Netflix, Hulu and Disney+, Plus, and it's certified to stream those in 4K. It also makes for a great little retro gaming console, and because it's based on Android, you can also play your favourite Android games too. It only has one micro USB port, which is used for its power, so we will need to use an OTG adapter to allow us to add our storage for our games. I'll pop a link to an adapter below. In the box, you will get an HDMI lead, a voice capable remote, batteries for the remote, a power lead, and of course, the on box itself. Right, let's turn this into a retro gaming console. Okay, let's get started by putting the device into developer mode. So you go into the settings, uh, down to a system, and then about. And then what we want to do is go down to the Android TV OS build and basically click on your select button until it says you're now a developer. Okay, now let's return to the search menu and we want to download an app called Downloader and this is going to allow us to install our emulators. Unfortunately, the emulators that are in the Google Play Store will not work, so we need to get apps from the general internet in order to basically um, be able to access our ROMs because a lot of the ROMs in the Google Play Store versions of these apps will not enable you to access your ROMs and as we'll find out with the N64 one we still won't be able to access the ROMs with that one we'll have to copy some across to the internal storage um, so it's not a perfect setup but for most of the emulators we will be able to access ROMs from the USB device Okay, right, so you go into Downloader, once you've got that installed, up, give it the permissions it needs and then search for RetroArch. Um, should be RetroArch because um, we want to get it from the official source. So if you search for RetroArch and then you'll be presented with the options, you want to pick the one that is RetroArch.com. Okay, and once that's loaded, we can go down and we can get RetroArch. Okay, now we want to download the stable build. Okay, right, that should download pretty quickly. And once that's downloaded, we can install it. It will ask you when we install this to um, allow this app to install apps. So Downloader at the moment doesn't have the permission to allow you to install apps, but what will happen is when we click on install, it should present us with the option to enable. Yeah, so here we go. So we need to go into our settings um, and now we need to say Downloader can, do, uh, can install unknown apps. And now we can continue with installation of RetroArch. So this is our first emulator. This emulator will be playing um, most of the sort of earlier consoles like NES, SNES, Genesis, um, but it will also be doing Dreamcast as well and PlayStation. Um, Dreamcast, because we can't get the ReDream app to run on this device, um, we can only use the Flycast core in RetroArch. Right, so now we've got that installed. We can return out um, and we can navigate to it and open RetroArch. So we can now set this up a bit. Um, so yeah, we need to enable it access. Right, and then once it's kind of loaded up, it will download, well, it will, it'll extract itself and it will kind of sort itself out and um, you'll see that the fonts will become non-crunchy and all that kind of stuff. So you just need to do that initial install Okay, yeah, so now you can see it's much better looking. So we're going to the settings. I like to change it to the 
XMB menu. Um, this just gives it a kind of PlayStation 3 design, which I, I kind of like. You can use this design, um, the, the standard design, but I prefer the, the XMB. Right, so we need to go into the configuration file and we need to save configuration file because it won't remember anything you do unless you do that. So now we need to quit um, and then go back in again and now it should look much nicer. Yeah, so there we go. Right, so now we've got RetroArch set up and yeah, that's looking pretty good. And can we see our ROMs directory? Yes, yeah, so you can see that it'd be storage slash whatever your device, right? So we'll come back to that later. That's install PPSSPP, um, which is our next emulator. This will, this will play PSP games, uh, but we'll come back to RetroArch because we want to get all the emulators installed and then we can actually go and play the games. Okay, yeah, so you just want to download the normal version. Um, you don't want the Google Play version. You want the APK for Android. Um, so give that an install. Okay, right, so now you, you won't get asked again to enable unknown sources. It should just install PPSSPP. And as I said, this will do your PSP emulation. Um, where most games on this uh, little device should play pretty well. Um, it won't be well beat in performance, but it should play pretty well most get most PSP games, not the most demanding. Right, okay, so back into Downloader. Let's install, um, let's install our N64 emulator. Again, N64 is better in a standalone emulator. You can run it with RetroArch 2 but I think we'll get better performance out of the standalone emulator. So if you search for emulator games, um, because I find that, that this version of the app, um, there, is an, there is a sort of newer version, but it doesn't work with, with this Android operating system, this latest version like Android 12. So go into N64 emulators, and then you want the Mupin 64 plus FZ download but get it from emulatorgames.net don't get it from like the official source because the version on there i found wouldn't play um you, you couldn't access your roms not even from the internal storage not even from the uh usb storage or your micro sd card whatever you're using um so yeah Okay, so you install, yeah, install the app. It's all going, going in. Okay, right. Yep, so you can delete the APK if you want because once you've installed it, you no longer need the APK. Um, right, so let's go down and take a look at this emulator. You have to give it permissions. Okay, and it should load itself up. And now when you go across to the right-hand side, um, first, hang on. Yeah, so you want to go across to the right hand side and then select the like refresh button that will then show you the folder structure now if we go back out of our parent folder you can see that you can't find the um we can't find it so um but we can't find our storage so what we're going to need now is to use some of our emulators we're going to need a file manager so if you if you go back into downloader and search for file manager um, we're going to need, we're going to need that because, um, it's especially in the PPSSPP, um, emulator, I wasn't able to see my ROMs without this. So you need this app installed. This will actually give us an ability to search. Um, so you want, don't get it from the play store, get it from up to down. Um, because again, the version on the Play Store will probably not be able to access files as well as this will. Um, this is the thing with the An uh, with Android recently. They've been they've been kind of messing about with the file system and making it more difficult, making it more locked down. And the problem is, is that you know you now can't play um, your games properly without kind of going around the houses to get these emulators, which I guess is why you're watching this video in the first place, because maybe you've already tried this and haven't been able to play games. Um, and hopefully this video is helpful for you. If it is, then please give it a like. Um, yeah, so we need, just need to give it permissions to be able to access. So you, it will take you into the right place. Just need to 
give it permissions in the settings, uh, change those permissions to allow management of all files and then allow that, yeah. And then fill it out, all the, you know, accept everything and move on. Okay, and so that gives us access to our storage device. So this is like the USB stick that you would have plugged in, um, um, you know, onto your OTG adapter. So this is where you've got all your ROMs stored. Um, obviously, you'll need to find your ROMs yourself. I won't tell you where to get those. And you'll need to basically prepare your USB stick. Um, USB stick needs to be formatted FAT32 um, because... Android won't work with it. I don't use XFAT because I don't believe XFAT will work. I think you have to use FAT32 for it to recognize the drive correctly. And then you can load your ROMs up onto your USB stick or your micro SD via an, ad via an adapter. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy individual N64 ROMs here across to the Moopin64 directory on my internal storage and the reason for that is I wasn't able to access the external storage from the Moopin Plus app so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste them across into here so um, I've just copied Mario Kart across to that directory so now if we go back into Moopin 64 we should be able to see that file so if we now, so the file, the folder that it creates will be Moopin plus FZ. So now we, we, if we put our ROMs in that correct directory, we should be able to scan them. Now, for some reason, the box art's not loading for the game. Um, and I'm not sure why that is, but the game does work. Um, so, right, so we're going to come out of that and um, I'm going to go and take a look at RetroArch again. Um, and I'll show you how to get to your ROMs from there. Um, and we'll come back to N64 later. Um, so I want to do the easier systems first. But that just shows you that you can get to the ROMs, but you have to kind of copy them across selectively for N64. So setting up um, RetroArch, we need to install the cores that we need. So in my case, I'm going to install like snares, NES, that sort of thing. So you can pick the... The, the systems that you're interested in here and the emulators that you want to install. You don't have to install the same ones as me, but it's likely that you're probably interested in playing similar games. So probably this will be the same ones that you're using. Um, I'm going to be doing NES, SNES, Genesis, um, PlayStation and Dreamcast in here. So I'm going to install those cores. Um, this is basically, this is the plugins for RetroArch that tell it you know, essentially, this is how it's running those emulators. These are the individual emulators, essentially, um, for the games. And obviously, you can play other systems like Neo Geo and that kind of thing. Um, but some some ROMs are better off in the, um, you know, standalone emulators, such as P uh, PS, uh, PPSSPP. Okay, so we're going to set some hotkeys as well, um, because this enables you to quit out of the game. So if you go into, like, the hotkeys, you can go into input and then hotkeys and then you can set what your kind of back to menu keys are. I'm going to choose L3 and R3 and that means when you press those two buttons you'll get like the quick menu to be able to kind of close your, um, your game or change some settings or what have you. So you need to save the configuration um, and now we're ready to basically uh, see if we can load up a game, I think. Um, we might, yeah. Yeah, so we can load some content. Now, you can load your ROMs into here, and um, you can set them up to sort of be permanently available, but I'm just going to quick access them. So I pick my my USB stick from the this, uh, the, the storage devices, and I'm going to go down to NES folder in my ROMs folder, and I'm gonna basically find my way down to Mega Man. And here we go, this is Mega Man playing on this little on TV box. So 
they uh, had no problem with that. And let's move on to Snez and Aladdin. All your sort of 16-bit, 8-bit systems should play pretty well on here. I mean, I wouldn't be expecting any issues at all. It's not going to be, there's not going to be any slowdowns. I don't think this device is well capable. Streets of Rage on Genesis. Well, Streets of Rage 2. Pretty good, it all played well. Try a bit of Crash Bandicoot. So Crash Team Racing. And see how well this handles PlayStation yeah, seems to be running really well on this. Um, no issues at all. Um, it's playing really smoothly at native resolution. Um, you could probably upscale this on this device as well. Um, you will need to copy across BIOS files and stuff to do that, pick the right emulator to do it. Um, but that seemed to run pretty well to me. Okay, now let's check out some Dreamcast. Okay, let's try Crazy Taxi, see how this runs. Now, this is a more demanding game. Dreamcast is a more demanding system. Um, this box should be capable, but we just want to, we might have to play with the settings just to make sure that the frame rates are reasonable. Okay, yep, so it's probably running a bit slow there. So let's go into the settings and let's, Let's basically change the options in the core and we're going down into the performance section and we can set up frame skipping. So basically we're running it at its native resolution with frame skipping on and let's see how it goes. I mean, it's not probably not going to play a hundred percent, but it might play reasonably well. You know, certainly well enough to enjoy it, I would say. Yeah, it's playing all right actually, and it and it feels relatively smooth. So, okay. Anyway, back onto N sixty four now. Um, we just need to set up. So with this this emulator, you need to set up the controllers. I'm using an Xbox controller, which I've connected to with Bluetooth. Um, so, just need to enable that and basically set up the Xbox um, controller. So it will, yeah, it will default to um, a different controller and all the buttons will be messed up and stuff. So we need to select like the Xbox 360 controller um, and use that one. Um, and then the game should play properly. Um, so let's check out some Mario Kart. And that's running pretty well. And Mario Kart's not one of the most difficult games to emulate. It should run pretty well. It runs really well on a Super Console X. Um, and it's running pretty well on this little device. I mean, this device is a lot smaller than the Super Console X. And um, it can be had, you know, in Walmart for 20 bucks. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a cheap device. Um, Okay, check out some crews in the USA. This is always a problem for um, Android devices. Um, usually they're not quite powerful enough. Certainly the Super Console X struggles with it. Um, this is, yeah, this is basically, I mean, it's, it's not going to run 100%. It's not going to run perfectly. But I certainly found it pretty playable. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure purists will say, oh no, you know, frame rate's just way too low. But... I don't know, the game is quite difficult to play anyway. I found, I found it played really well, just like that. Um, but it's up to you um, how you feel about it. Um, 
N64 Goldeneye, one of the most difficult games to emulate on this platform. Um, it's, yeah, you kind of want you know, a box that can play all these things difficult. Um, you know, you kind of it's starting to get into mini PC territory, but this runs pretty well. I, I, again, frame rates are kind of not showing the full story. I found it really playable. I played all the way through this level and you know, it seemed fine to me. I would be happy to play like this. Um, some people may not. Okay, let's go back into PSP PP now and let's see if we can load a game. And this is where I was saying you need to, the Farm Manager Plus installed because you won't be able to load a game directly in the app. It will, want, once you've loaded it once, it gets added into the app and it knows where it is. But you need initially to load it through the um, through the file manager app, um, which is which isn't a bad feature. I found on the Chromecast that you could get it to see files. Okay, so let's check out Need for Speed. Um, it's running at four times resolution. Um, seems to be going pretty good. Um, the frame rate looks good so far. Right. Okay. Let's see how it goes. Seems pretty good. Okay, let's check out another game. This is more difficult to emulate. Let's check out Tekken 6. Let's have a look. So, yeah, again, first time you've got to load everything up through this file manager app. It's a bit of a pain, but they will be in there. Uh, once, once you've played them once, they'll be in the list. So it will remember where it was. So let's see how it gets on. One. Yeah, so frame rate's a little bit, yeah, it's quite low. It should be sort of 60, it's now about 40 odd to 50, so it's not quite there. Let's tweak it. Change the, change, take it down to two times. Okay. Yeah, again, still not really playing great. Um, in some cases, you can kind of live with some slight slowdowns, but yeah, it's not perfect, so let's go in and let's see if we can do some frame skipping on it. Okay. You win. Okay, so let's see what it's like. Round so now two. it'll be showing us like 30 FPS with this frame skip, so let's see how well it does with that. Seems a bit better. Yeah, I think, I think that's better, but I don't know, it's still playing a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it will make, it will depend on what's going on in the game with these sort of things as well, how much, you know, kind of action is in, in you know, in the scene. Um, so if, you, if you're, you know, on some levels it might seem to be playing okay, but if you're your scene changes so in this case you've got a lot of weather in the background you've got like, rain coming down and lightning and things so yeah like a helicopter in the background so you're sort of seeing the frame frames drop a bit um so let's change the settings again okay so you'll probably take it down to three times okay I'm not sure there was much difference there Again, you can play with these settings. You can, you know, let's take it down again, take it down to two, or, yep. Um, and let's see, and yeah, I mean, you're not really getting much better. I mean, it just may be the limitations of this box. This is for a particularly hard game on the PSP to emulate, so it's kind of one that we can check out, see whether we're getting see whether we're getting what we expect but anyway yeah I mean it's playing it's playing well enough to, uh, to play to be honest with you I think but um, it's personal preference sometimes on these some people will just be like no it has to be 60 it has to be perfect anyway so as you can see the games do remain there um, once you've once you've kind of played them okay let's check out the hardest game um, Let's check out the uh, check out God of War, um, and I've, it sort of surprised me this one. 
Um, it did play quite well, I thought. A little bit of frame drops there. I mean, this is at native resolution, so. But yeah, um, it didn't play too bad. It was definitely playable. Uh, but if that's been useful to you, um, if you could like the video, that'd be great. Um, if you can subscribe, that'd be amazing. If you could click the notification bell so you get notified of videos coming, um, coming out. But thanks very much for watching that. I hope it's been useful for you.